Welcome to another edition of Talk That Talk. We have the Chicago native, Chris Rhino Elmo in the building, Syracuse fullback and defensive tackle. What's good, baby? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, man. What's going on, man? Where you at? See, you got the man, sun going down over there. <laughs> I'm actually out here in Tampa with my family, quarantining out here, working out, you know, spending time with them. Speaking of working out, man, I see you out here pushing minivans, <laughs> trees, and what's going on? What's what's the workout regimen been looking out looking like? Man, it's it's a it's a little weird, you know, with like gyms being closed. So like it's like you got to pick up things around the house and just improvise, you know. Like one day I had a kickboxing bag, I tied it around a tree and worked worked on explosion punches. Like you said, I went outside, did a, a half mile car push, and just things like that, you know, just trying to improvise since I can't just get under the bar. All right, man, so we got to start this off hot. I was looking at Sports Illustrated, and I looked at the top 100 players, and I looked at the top 50 players within Bleach Report. Right. And you weren't on that list. How do you feel about that? Man, you know, it's just – that's that's just the goal of mine, you know, being one of the best players. And when I look at things like that, I'm like, why not me, you know, and it's just like – it's just like it pushes me to go harder, you know, because it's like if my name's not on there now, it's going to be on there soon, you know, and I just want to make sure that I make a name for myself. Are you a better fullback or defensive tackle? Mm, I'll say, ha. Huh. Well, D tackle was my position in high school, and, it's, you know, since I've been in college, I shied away from that a little bit. But I'll start to say D tackle, man. Those are my original roots, and they're going to forever be. What's your weight at right now? Because I know you're six feet. Yeah, right now I've actually dropped ten pounds, so I'm at, I'm at about two seventy six right now, feeling good. Uh, you you trimming down? Yeah. <laughs> is that the goal, or is that just what you working out and you just losing the weight? Man, the goal of mine was really two seventy five, two seventy, but I'm there now, so it's like, man, if I can get to two sixty five and just be a beast on the field, then I can do it. But I don't want to lose too much weight and not be able to play D line though. That's what I was just about to say. If you lose that weight, will that affect your position? Yeah, and more so, I guess, defense. Yeah, it kind of would. So that's why I don't – I really don't want to do it. But when it's time to go to the league, like, hopefully I get down to that 260 range and be good. All right, man. So, obviously, you're a Chicago native, like I said earlier. Explain to me how it was switching your demographic from Chicago to Syracuse. Obviously, the cold weather doesn't bother you, but yeah. tell me a little bit about the atmosphere and how you adapted to being in Syracuse. Man, it's different. You know, I'm a I'm a big city boy. You know, Chicago's a big city. It's a lot going on. Kind of like kind of like New York City, but it's it's just like man, being in Syracuse is a smaller city. It's not a lot of commotion, so it's much calmer. You know, like you don't see as many people trying to rush to get from point A to point B. It's much more laid back, and it's like it's smooth. So I know you're a big music guy. Yeah, of G Herbo. Tell yeah. me. Some of your favorite music by G Herbo? Man, uh, recently he just dropped the tape PTSD, so I like that. That's probably number one on my list. And um, a tape project that he named after one of his dead, his dead friends. And it was just like every song on those two tapes are like, man, like, I still listen to that Pistol P project to this day. And that probably came out 2015, 2014. So what's really the, because I'm not too familiar with G Herbo. G Herbo like that, but what's the difference between him? Because I heard he was in the street, but he's a little bit different than I guess you could say like Chief Keef. Yeah. You know, Chief Keef is actually a goon to my understanding. He's about that life. But G yeah. Herbo was around those people and they knew that he was like it's kind, of, it's, kind of, it's kind of different because like Herb is from the east side of Chicago. I'm from the south side where where Lil Dirt, Chief Keef and all of them are from. And like the south side is like much more like, it's wild, you know, it's just wild. And the, east the west side is, is wild, too. Yeah, west side is wild, too, man. But the east side is, like, they're more, like, with their gangs, they're, like, more organized and just, like, they're not just out here, like, loose screws. So, like, Herb kind of carried himself as just, like, a like a head honcho in the in the game. You feel what I'm saying? Even at a young age, like, he never he never was, like, a wild dude who, who you always heard about doing this, doing that. Like, he was just a dude who was worried about getting his money, and that's why he's where he's at now. Yeah, so you said a little bit about how, like, Chicago can be a real intense and tough environment. Mm -hmm. Explain to me how much that impacted you while, like, your focus and how you tried to stay <coughs> your tunnel vision while you were playing football in high school. Explain to me how you really just stayed locked up. Uh, man, it could definitely be a lot of distractions, man. I remember sometimes at practice, we'll hear shootouts on the next block. Why y'all practicing? 
while we practice it, man, my brother had actually seen somebody get shot going to get some water one time. He looked down the street and just see somebody drop after a gunshot. We didn't see we didn't see police car chases all down our block. We didn't have guys we didn't have guys get chased by police while we practicing through the middle of our field, like just literally like just getting chased by cops. And we like, all right, man, like, all right, back to practice, you know. So it's just like those like those distractions could definitely get hectic at times. But it's just like when you when you got places you want to go, like you're not gonna let anything distract you from getting where you want to go. Yeah, I was really just about to feed off that. So do you feel like that really makes you different coming from the environment? that you came from when you get around other players that may be similar like you, but then you're around others that have been spoon fed a lot of things. How does that feed you, your hunger? Man, it just, it's just like, you know, you see a lot of players who go to the NFL who are just like, who basically were just like handed that opportunity. And there's guys who like got to take that opportunity. I see myself one of those guys who got to take that opportunity because, you know, like, it was never handed to me like, oh, all American, five star things like that. You know, like it was, it was worked for. Like I'm an undersized D lineman. You know, like nobody ever thought I'd be a six foot D lineman playing playing D one ball. You know, Syracuse gave me a shot, and you know that's all I need was a shot. And it's just like you get somebody with a drive and a hunger like me a shot, like I'll do so much with it. Yeah, um, one of the big things that I know you've been recognized for, like you said, is your hunger. I was watching. Um, your national signing, your national scouting day, and they were talking about you before you got there. It was a couple of coaches that were saying that you were you were close to 300 pounds, you were six uh, six feet, and you were just hungry, and you were ready to come in and make that impact. Uh, how does that really make you feel? Man, it, it made me feel good, you know, to know that a, a program like Syracuse was looking at a guy like me who was just undersized, under-recruited, and just knew that I had the potential and was willing to give me that chance, man. You know, that's just much gratitude to them. And, like, it's just I got to pay that forward, you know, like, I can't just, I just can't just like take this opportunity. But, oh, they gave me this opportunity and just sit on it. I got to build on it. Yeah, I definitely feel you on that. So let's let's dive deep into the football. We get to the first game of the year within 2019. <laughs> Clemson comes to the dome, man, and does work, man. You know, yeah. Even at a hundred, they spent you. Yeah. <laughs> how did how did that fuel you as you were? looking to push down the season and really what were your frustrations when you were coming out that game? Man, you know, it's just, they were the number one team at the time. They were coming back into our dome, you know, freshman year, we, my freshman year, we had beat them. So we were looking at, you know, sophomore year, we went down there, we lost a close game. So that year we were just looking to come out and just, you know, get on them early and just step on their necks and stay there. And, you know, things didn't work out our way, you know, so. It's just, man, that that feel like I never want to feel that again, have somebody come in our house and just whoop on us like that. Like, even the games after that that we lost at home, like, you know, like, I don't like that feeling. You know, I never want to feel that feeling again. So I try every every day, you know, I, that's why I'm working how I work. You know, it's my last ride. I can't, I can't leave no regrets. And being that you're stepping into your senior year, this is a real pivotal time for you. Um, what are some things that you're struggling with personally in your game that are weaknesses that you're trying to make strengths down? Uh, one of my weaknesses is kind of my speed. You know, I, for me to be a fullback, I got to be able to get to the hole and get there fast to be able to clear for my running backs. So I've definitely been focusing on my speed, uh, my mobility a lot more, you know, my flexibility, being able to bend at, bend at my knees and not my waist as much so that way I can get more explos explosion in my blocks. What what type of things do you do to work on your your flexibility? I stretch, try to stretch every day. You know, going in the spring ball, I was stretching every day. I kind of shied away from that with the corona going on, but now I'm getting re getting back readjusted to that stretching every day, making sure my hips are loose, my hamstrings are loose, just make sure all my lower body's good. All right, man. So I believe it was your freshman year. You wore the number thirty six. Mm -hmm. Freshman sophomore year. Yeah. Why Why did you transition to number five? What is What is no. Number five is just my lucky number, you know, and I'm just like, man, I had five my freshman year of high school. Then I, I later changed to 36 when I got on varsity. And it's just like five is just my lucky number. And I'm like, man, like, no better time than right now to have my lucky number when it's like, it's do or die, it's make or break. It's like your guy D. Rose when he came, uh, I think when he came back after his injury, he went back to 25. That's Simeon D. Rose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the city jumping when, when he was uh, like the city. He's definitely a. Uh, how <laughs> did you man? I miss those D Rose days. Yeah, I do too, man. We all do. Yeah. Uh so 
So what are your personal goals that are coming up now? Because you've seen some of your teammates like Tristan Jackson, Sean mm -hmm. Riley, be signed to the NFL now. How does that fuel you now? Like you're you're known for <coughs> intensity. Like you're always at the front of the pack coming out the tunnel for the games. Like where's your mindset now? Because it's time for you to really lock in and take your game to that next level. Yeah, my mindset is just, you know, like, don't worry about the end result of the game. Don't worry about the end result of the season. Just play every snap to your best ability. Play it like it's your last because it ultimately could be my last, especially with it being my last season. You know, I don't I don't want to go out there and just try to make plays that I don't need to be trying to make, Get like getting out of my gap on block, on, on fits and things like that. Like, just focus in, do my job, and do it to the best that I can and let the plays happen for me. Definitely. So, some people may not know, but I think that you have a hidden talent when it comes to media. Yeah. <laughs> you sparked it up and you started Rhino Rumble. I don't know if a lot of people paid attention to it, but before I actually met you, I was paying a close attention to it, and I thought that it was a really dope concept. Yeah. Explain to me how that was really created and why you started it. Man, it was uh, it actually came from a former teammate of mine, Zaire Franklin. He had his uh, Z60 episode where he'll go around and interview teammates. Then after that, it was uh, Kylan Whitner, what they had, Wits Up. And, you know, just like I'm an enthusiastic guy, you know, I'm a great personality. So the video people came to me and were just like, hey, you want to take over this series? And, I, and just like all my life, my family's been telling me like, man, you need to get a TV show. You need to go on camera. You need to do this, do that. Never went to listen to them. So I'm like, man, here's my shot. Let me see. Like, what's the worst that can happen? I like making people laugh. So I'm like, here's my shot. So how was your preparation for it really do? Were you, was it just a taste for you? Is it something that you might consider taking serious if, if football happened not to work out? Man, it's definitely something I consider taking serious. You know, it's just a natural talent for me. And it was just like, they told me what to prep, how to prep it. And just like, gave, basically gave me the format and I just did the rest. You know, I laid out, I told them like my locations I wanted filmed. You know, I set up my questions, my brain teaser I got on my own and things like that. I set up the people who I wanted to interview. So I feel like, it definitely could be something in the near future. I definitely feel that. So, um, <clears throat> also, you had someone that was very um, close to you pass away, a young lady that you were close to. Explain to me how that really affected you while you were in high school and um, how you were able to push past that. Man, I still say it to this day, like, if she didn't pass and I didn't make my promises to her, I don't think I would be where I am now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to, I called her my best friend, my diary, and I told her everything. She used to date my center in high school, who's a best friend of mine, and just going from talking to her every day to not talking to her at all, it kind of really messed my mind up, and I had promised her way before she had passed away that, like, I was like, I'm going to make it, make it to the lead for us, you know, just because you're my friend, I'm bringing you with me, and, like, I just feel like I got to keep that promise for her, and, like, that's why I go as hard as I do. All right, man. Well, listen, I definitely appreciate you checking in and tapping in with the people. And, uh, man, stay focused, stay on the grind. And um, just so you know, since you started Rhino Rumble, we either need a season two or something new for the people to see with your talent. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right, man. Rhino's in the building. Talk that talk. Thank you guys for tuning in.